Like, why didn't they just do that? Why didn't they just turn Raphael into like a vampire? Like, or a hybrid? I know the necromancer was like screwing with him, but like, why didn't they just do that? What's up, everybody? Let's get it cracking. This is A List A, and we're gonna be talking about legacies. They legit canceled this fucking show. They canceled this. They canceled this show. They canceled this show. And we're just gonna talk about some things that I have not only learn but things i have enjoyed versus other people other people for some reason there are people with critiques and stuff like that thought this show was boring and stuff like that or just thought it wasn't up to par with originals or vampire diaries which i gotta say that was the point it wasn't supposed to be like exactly like those other two at all it's supposed to be something entirely different but i'm gonna just go on and say how i felt about it now how i felt about it i really enjoyed legacies like it was so fun all throughout the seasons and stuff like that like after you get over the fact that there is going to be a monster like every week you kind of like enjoy how the characters are and become yes there's a lot of flaws and stuff like that but the fun moments that were there they're really they're really fun some people are just like oh yeah it picked up around season four when hope lost her humanity but they never mentioned season three hope went face to face with malivore in Landon's body and was still eating that man up. <laughs> she had to be a cage everything, talking heavy to old dude, bro, and nobody mentions it. No one mentions it. And nobody mentions how good of a villain that Adia, the one who plays Landon in the show, they never mentioned how good he was as a villain. Like, this shit had me in chills. I was just like, he looks a little too good for this role. Like, <laughs> nice casting. Like, what the heck? Oh yeah, if you hear that noise in the back, it's my PS4. But anyway, yes, Lyndon played a very good villain. And the issue is that people had an issue with Malivore. Like, you know, they were just like, oh, he's a mud monster. He's this, 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 and the third. He was created just to fight a dragon and shit like that. Like, I don't... Here's the thing. Dragons were, like, a huge threat back in the day and stuff like that. People, they, they're literally flying creatures who breathe fire. Vampires cannot fly, werewolves cannot fly, witches we haven't seen as of yet, but they can't fly either. So it's kind of hard trying to reach them. Like, you know, what the hell are they going to do? Enchant a bow and arrow and shoot at it? I mean, they could try, but I don't think it would do anything and stuff like that. Like, they needed something. And so they thought of that. Was it good to have a mud monster as the thing? No, but the whole point was so that it could eat up whatever threat there was. Did they mess up? Yes. <laughs> like, they, they did. They really did. But, yeah. Like, they needed a villain that was not the same as the Vampire Diaries in the originals. And so they got this villain. And even though his appearance is it ain't shit and stuff like that, his powers... Mm, that's pretty heavy too and the fact that he ate a human being and birth like gave th this woman came out pregnant with a baby boy and that my good person is landon the fact that landon was like he basically cannot die like for the longest and malivore did that on purpose i i, I think yeah it pretty much is obvious he like did it on purpose gave him phoenix powers landon's a mythical being he isn't really, like, he's half a person. He's not really a person and stuff like that. He felt like he couldn't fit in anywhere. Well, that's because he's not like everything else, which made it better. That's why, like, some characters being added, like, I love Wade. Wade got so much shit, and I love him. He's the only fairy in there. Like, he's a fairy. He's different from everybody. And that one girl, I forgot her name. Oh, I forgot her name. But they try to make her the mean girl that's been there all along. And she has not. She she was not there all along. I think her name starts with an A. I don't know. But she replaced Penelope in the mean girl status. And I think she talked shit about Wade's parents. Like, I was just like, bro, she talking heavy with this shit. Why are we hating on, on Wade, bro? Like, he's the only fairy there. He's actually different. None of y'all can relate. Sorry, there's another son, uh, sound in the back. It's my um, fan and stuff like that, um, air conditioning. But I'm going to have to make this whole section about what they did to Raphael, okay? <laughs> okay, so I have never been so bad at what they did to a character, bro. Like, since, like, the death of Neji from Naruto, Shippuden and Naruto. Like, 
at least his death meant something. Raphael's death, bro, I feel like they fired him. I'm not even going to go I feel like they fucking fired him. Like, ugh. Oof, I just realized I'm over here mentioning all these characters and stuff like that, and you may be new. So, I don't even know if that many people going to, like, see this and stuff like that. But still, let me just explain some of the characters. Hope Michelson, she is the main character of the show. This is her show, Legacy. She was in another show of the originals, the um, prequel to this series. She is a tribrid. She's a witch, a vampire, and a werewolf. More werewolf than any of those things, but whatever. Her parents is Haley Marshall and Klaus Michelson. Haley is a werewolf that later on gets turned into a hybrid of vampire and werewolf genes. Klaus is a legend. <laughs> They're both legends, but Klaus is, uh, he is a legend. He is literally, he was born a werewolf slash witch, but his witch powers weren't awakened. Then he was turned into an original vampire, which is like an enchanted vampire that precedes every other vampire due to the fact that they weren't turned by like a bite. They were turned by a witch. I'm like, who is their mom? That's a lot to take on. But he was a werewolf before he was a vampire. Then he was turned into a vampire. The mother hid his werewolf side because if she could turn a whole bunch of kids into vampires, she sure can hide somebody's werewolf genes. So, you know. He awoke in, it in Vampire Diaries, his werewolf side, and so he became the, like, legendary hybrid and stuff like that, you know. And his mom is a witch as well. When you're a vampire, you can't really act on your witch powers, you know. At least they used to do that, then they started coming up with other stuff. But you can't really act on your witch powers. But that's the father. I said a lot for the dad. So for Hope, that's a lot of legend and stuff like that coming from him. He's a 1,000 years old. She's going to inherit probably almost all her enemies if they had continued legacies they ain't continued legacies i'm so i'm so mad next up is landon ah yes the troubled kid who felt like he never fit in anywhere he is an orphan um as well as Raphael. he would be going from house to house foster houses and stuff like that and at one point, he met Raphael, who became basically a brother to him. And they would just, every house that they would um, leave from, they would go to together and stuff like that. He, he would suffer a lot of abuse from these foster homes. And it even shows at one point, I think. It shows in Raphael. I think it also shows in Landon. But that was back in season one. That was so long ago. But they suffered a bunch of abuse from going house to house and things like that and then as the show starts we see Landon basically sitting outside of a church being unaware of the fact that Raphael is a werewolf and is basically being tied down and tortured for being a beast but Landon's unaware because he has his headphones in he's sitting on the steps of the church he doesn't really know what's going on until he meets Hope Michelson what he is he is the son of Malivore uh, something that resembles a mud pit, but it is an enchanted being that was made to defeat the dragon of the ancient lands. And what it does, it can consume any monster and bring it into like another dimension inside of his gullet. The problem is he's an endless pit. He is always hungry. That is the thing. Like, you know, you made an endless fucking pit like, that eats monsters, bro. It eats anything, actually. But you made this. What the heck? how he came to be sorry that was long how he came to be was that a woman who worked for like a program that defeats monsters and stuff like that like fights monsters and stuff like that she had the information i think of malivore and then to get away from it she went inside like she, he's literally a pit of black goo so she basically jumped inside of him the issue is once you get inside malivore it's like you're erased from existence that's the thing i left out you're erased from existence you no longer exist like people will not remember you so she came out though she came out pregnant and it's like how can you impregnate him like that's the thing i cannot explain that um but yes and that's how landon was born he came inside this pregnant woman the issue is they showed in the show as well he ain't know his mama she kind of like gave him up 
like you know on purpose because what if you never expected to have a kid at the time you did and you were impregnated by a mythical mud pit what would you do like you're gonna keep the kid not that everybody could go through that much not everybody has that willpower like that everybody can do that like don't expect much from her but yes sorry there's a lot on Landon but one thing I noticed with Landon is that his father had a mission like of course he did not make Landon just for Landon to exist and just to impregnate a woman for the first time he didn't do that he made Landon so that he could have a physical body to walk around eventually in the first parts of the show it shows Landon like stealing things and he he don't remember that he stole it he doesn't even realize he's taking it and it's all because it's part of his father's plan it's like he's like programmed in a way to to just continue the mission and I, I found that really interesting I like how they did that because I was just like ain't no way he stole this knife and then he gonna pull out his jacket he's just like what is this I was just like oh my gosh oh my gosh he's groomed to be a thief I was just like that but yes but that is on Linda. it was not brief I was about to say that was a brief synopsis that was not that was not brief at all I'm sorry now we're gonna go to Raphael now we're on Raphael Raphael is a werewolf he is I would say he's more like half werewolf half human but yeah he's a werewolf like Landon he would he was an orphan and would go from home to home and stuff like that due to always having complications at the previous homes suffering from abuse from various ones and stuff like that there's even an episode where he's inside of a closet and he's remembering the like lashes of the belt he would get be constantly being whooped for existing um I wouldn't even say whoop beat that it will beat for be existing and stuff like that you know so as i explained with landon he goes to a church because those were his foster parents too they were bringing him to a church because he is a werewolf and in this world in order to become a werewolf you would have to kill someone in order to do that and that's kind of his story arc you know he basically was talking with his girlfriend he got mad and was driving all reckless and stuff like that and he killed his girlfriend in a car wreck you know after that he was able to lift up like lawnmowers and shit like tons and tons and stuff like that he became really strong his foster parents noticed it and they brought him to a church to like basically bless him out of the evil tied him down all that stuff like that it was a lot and that is how they meet hope michaelson and alaric alaric is uh, i'll explain with alaric soon now that i explained the big three of the series I'm gonna go back to my rant about Raphael. Okay, so Raphael, they basically, I felt like they built him up to a certain point. And then after a while, they were just like, nah, we don't want him no more. And then I think they decided to fire him out of nowhere to make room for other characters. The reason why I feel this way is because of how it was in season one. In season one, we he's like the new kid in this school of like magical beings and stuff like that has witches werewolves vampires all that you know he's a new kid he meets these two kids who are both witches and stuff like that he kind of one of them likes him the other one like you know also likes him as well and stuff like that he like kisses one and sleeps with the other but that's besides the point he falls in love with hope eventually it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff but we have his backstory he killed his girlfriend to become a werewolf he even defeats the alpha squad of the werewolves because you know like omegaverse alphas and betas and all that stuff like that he defeated the alpha of it so that he could have a side on the council what happened in some episodes was that landon is not he's more hu he appeared more human this is kind of like the first episodes he appeared more human and Raphael was fighting to keep landon in the school because landon didn't show any mythical qualities he, his dad is a mud pit and stuff like that you know his powers are a phoenix he dies and then comes back but you can't really show that because like you know how are you gonna know like oh yeah let's just kill him and then he comes back and hope he comes back like how are you supposed to know at the beginning of the season right so Raphael he defeated the alpha just to have like a seat on the council of like uh, all the different factions and stuff like that and they still rule that he shouldn't that Lyndon shouldn't be there and I was just like, I thought that was really cool. It showed how his character was, you know. It showed, like, not only how much he really cared and stuff like that. It showed his connection with Landon. He don't want to separate from him, understandably, and stuff like that. They build up his character. 
they build up his character to not only be like this really like you know morally good dude who made a mistake became the world he is and all that they build it up to where he falls in love with hope and uh, my problem with this one was that they had him fall in love with hope while will landon basically his brother is in love with hope as well and is already dating her right and i was just like why did they choose this why, why is this the thing why is this the thing i thought he was into those other witches who liked him because he slept with one and kissed the other so i thought he was going to end up with at least one of them no it's a falling and literally in love with hope and i was just like this is not love this is infatuation this is an infatuation he knows nothing about her so i was just like why did they make his character like this bro and that's just season one then afterwards i feel like they don't know what to do with his character much so they just kind of like leave it at that you know kind of have those little moments for him and then whatnot and i think around season three is when they really started messing up his character i know i'm i like skipped season two and stuff like that my mind is so fuzzy when it comes to season two. Oh, oh my gosh they messed up his character there's a monster called necromancer deals with dead can bring the dead back can kill the dead all that um i i don't like the villain so if i speak like very flat and and just tone deaf and shit i don't like him so that's why i don't speak much about him um basically Raphael dies like or he's on the verge of dying and then basically they defeat the necromancer for this little moment then Raphael, he's fine then they start the episode with Raphael being okay and like he's joking around with Landon he over here picking Landon up and stuff like that just like you know tossing him around all that stuff just playing with him and stuff like that and then Raphael starts feeling bad and he holds his chest and stuff like that he could start coughing up black goo and I was just like ah oh. ah oh. Oh, no, they did it. <laughs> no, they did not. They made him die again. They were killing him off. So their solution was they didn't want him to die. So they put him inside this like other dimension. It's called a prison world where it was made by witches. You know, it's in the shape of a kind of like a circular metal globe and stuff like that. It's very small. They, the witches made this other dimension. Alaric really honestly had this other dimension. It was made in vampire diaries i think um they put him inside there to with his parents as well i forgot to eat. I, see season two i think it introduced us to his parents god dang it he met his father father basically is not aware what the mom is and all that stuff like that met the mother in a bar it was either him or some other character damn I'm trying to remember <laughs> met the mother in a bar all that stuff like that so when he's on the verge of dying he's put in this prison world so that he doesn't die in the physical world it's kind of like his life is in limbo he gets to live the perfect life in the prison world it's basically the same as the regular world but not the regular world um he lives with his parents there and they go fishing and live in this cabin in the woods and they're just chill so why is this a problem for me this is a world where you could turn a werewolf into a vampire and still have werewolf qualities so even if he dies, he can he could just be turned. Like, why did we why did we put him in prison? <laughs> why did we put him in prison? He could have just been a fucking hybrid. Like, why did we do that? I think the show explains it, but I forgot, and so I'm still pissed off. Cause no, no, why did we why why did we do that? Why was that why was that the option? This is there was no other way to turn him. I was just like, nah, I feel like they really killed him for real. Oh my gosh. And before he was even dying, they made this plot line where basically he's related to like King Arthur and stuff like that. And like the sword in the rock. He lifted the sword in the rock. So he's basically of a royal bloodline. And he kept the sword in the prison world. So they basically made him that bloodline, but they didn't go anywhere with it. It's kind of like they just throw it in. Just cause. When they weren't gonna do anything else with it. <sighs> I hate it. I hate it so much. First, you make him fall in love with his brother's girl. Then you go make him a royal bloodline. Then you go make him meet his parents and stuff like that. Then you go kill him. And then he's out for the rest of the day. Pissed off. Highest pissedivity. I don't even think this happened in season three. I think it happened in season two. And that's why I'm still mad. Because I think that's the only part I remember about season two. I'm just so upset. Like, I like this character, man. I like, I really like this character. I'll never get over it. I won't. Because why? And now it's over with. Then again, they could bring it back. They brought back some other shows and stuff like that. Hell, they even rebooted some other shows and stuff like that. They may reboot this one. 
sadly. I don't really want them to, but they may reboot this one. Mm. But that's it, guys. I'll see you later.